Hi everyone, this is Jason. I've been learning more about SPCC, the photometric color calibration tool from PixInsight, and I wanted to show you how to use filters for your one-shot color camera, as well as how to use the Curve Explorer to make custom filters for your setup or to import filters others have made using filter management. With one-shot color cameras, you want to make sure that the QE curve is set to ideal QE curve. This is because the Bayer matrix on one-shot color cameras is already tuned to the QE curve of the sensor, unlike mono cameras that have no Bayer matrix. That's why there are various cameras listed here as options. If you shoot mono, you want to pick your camera sensor. But what we're talking about today are one-shot color. So for that, always choose ideal QE curve. I'd also leave the white reference at average spiral galaxy, unless you have a specific reason to change it. Now for one-shot color, most cameras in common use from companies like ZWO, QHY, Altair, and ATIC are using Sony CMOS sensors, and those sensors already have a UV IR cut filter in place, which is why these are the defaults in SPCC. To get a better understanding of, of what this does, let's take a look at the Curve Explorer. So in the Curve Explorer, you can see the quantum efficiency curve for various sensors, as well as the transmission curves for various filters. These show what percentage of light is passing through to the sensor at specific wavelengths. So let's combine the three default filters for the Sony CMOS UVIR cut. Here I've got red selected. I'm going to hold down the control key and select G, and you can see how that overlaps, and then B. So that's the full range of light transmission through uh, commonly used uh, Sony CMOS sensors with UV IR cut uh, filters. And you can see how there are these hard stops uh, at both the infrared as well as the ultraviolet. And that's compared to, say, these um, default sensors with no UV and IR cut. You can see how they extend out beyond uh, into those regions. So when SPC was first released, one-shot color users mostly had to use these default filters. But now the PixInsight team have released filters in common use, such as those from Optolong. So let's take a look at the L-Extreme. Here's the red channel. Notice that it's much more restricted than just the default red, uh, green, and blue, because the L-Extreme has seven nanometer band passes. But notice how each color has some crossover, meaning that red isn't just HA. You're getting some blue and green in there too. That's because the sensor's Bayer matrix allows uh, some light in for red all the way down to the UV cut line. And we can see that if we combine this filter with the red filter, the red default filter, and you can see the, uh, the default filter's uh, line is what defines the maximum limit of the blue and green that come through here. And the same is true if, uh, for example, if we pick uh, the L-Extreme green channel and now overlay that with the UVIR cut green channel, and you can see that that peak that's coming through here uh, in the red, despite the fact that we're on the green channel, is defined by the shape of the curve for the, the green UVIR cut filter that's already in that sensor. So while I do use some of, the, uh, some of these new filters uh, that were included in the most recent release, I also use the IDAS NVC, and that wasn't included. So after reviewing the documentation and chatting with the PixInsight developer on Facebook, I made my own, and I'm making them available for you to use. The link is in the video description below. So initially, um, I followed the PixInsight team's model of making specific red, green, and blue UVIR cut uh, versions. That got to be rather tedious. So as I got requests to make more of these filters, I just made the curve for the filter, and I'll show you how to use the Curve Explorer uh, to make them into red, green, and blue filters you can use. So first, let's get these loaded. Download the CSV files to a directory on your computer, and these are just text files, there's nothing scary. Feel free to open them up and take a look. With the files in one folder, 
from the S from uh, SPCC, click on File Management, and select Import CSV Filter Definitions and Merge with Current Filters. Click the folder icon to navigate to where you save the files. You won't see the files because you're just selecting the folder. Click, uh, click Select Folder and then click OK. In the Process window, you'll see the files that were loaded. And if we check in SPCC, they're now available for use. Look, there's the IDAS NBZ. So I made these with the Sony uh, CMOS uh, UVIR cut versions for um, both the, the MBZ, uh, the MBZ uh, UHS, um, the Altair Quad Band, uh, as well as the ASCAR uh, Duo Magic D1 and D2. After, uh, after that, as people asked for more, I just made the generic curves so that you can make your own filters with a Curve Explorer. And here's how you do that. So you click Curve Explorer, and let's go find uh, one of the uh, generic curves. So initially, uh, the PixInsight team included uh, both the Optolong L Pro as well as the IDAS P3, but I actually use the IDAS D3. And so if I want to make that available, and notice that the channel out here is, is pan. I'm not quite sure what pan stands for, but that just means that you, if it's pan, you're not going to see it showing up here in the list of, of uh, red, green, and blue filters. But what you can do is anything that's listed pan is you can use the Curve Explorer to make your own filters. So to make uh, my own custom filters for the D3, I select that. I scroll down to find uh, the red channel for the Sony Color Sensor R UV IR cut. I hold the control key so that both get selected. Now we can see that both charts are, are overlapping each other. Then I click this button with the three, uh, the three squares on it, and I want to give this uh, new filter a name. So I'm going to call this Sony color CMOS R dash UV IR cut and I'm going to call it LPS oops, D3 and this is going to be for the red channel so I put in an R and I click OK now, that, uh, that red channel is now available to me. And so if I click up here, well, I'll tell you what, let's finish up here. So that red channel is now available to me, but I need to do this two more times to do the green and the blue. So again, I come back up and find the D3. I hold the control key and I scroll down. And now I go to the green channel overlay, click the button, give it a, a, uh, a name, Sony Color CMOS G, oops, G, UVIR cut, LPS D3. And I'm just doing this because it, it follows the naming convention that uh, the PixInsight team used. You can call it whatever you want. And this is for the green channel, so capital G. Okay. And now we've got one more to do, which is the blue. So we come up to the D3. We hold down the control key. And we select blue, which overlays. The three has the button with the three squares. Sony color CMOS B dash oops, B dash UVIR cut LPS D3. And this is for 
the blue channels, capital B. Okay, and so now they're here. So in fact, if I overlay all three, you can see how um, you can still see the shape of um, the default filters in there, right? So that's the default filters, and this is with D3 in there. See how they all fit uh, under those curves. And uh, when I click OK, it's going to ask me, some combined filters have been defined. Do you want to save them? Well, yes, that's why I made them. I want to save them. Cool. Now, those will be available in here. In fact, there it is. There's uh, Sony Color CMOS R UV IR Cut LPS D3 for R and for green and for blue. Cool. Pretty straightforward. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that you've just created some filters and you've just um, imported some filters. To ensure that these re remain available to you the next time you run Pix Insight, uh, let's go to Filter Management. And what we want to do is we want to export the XML filters database and we want to define an output file. So, uh, well, you can see I've done this once before. So let's come in here to this temp directory. I'll call it my filter database and I'll hit save and then I'll click OK and you can see that it's extracted it shows you all the filters that it's extracted and saved to that database um, but what you want to do is uh, hit the little wrench icon here and navigate to where you just saved that database and click open and OK and what that does is that makes sure that that's your default database in SPCC so the next time you run um, Pix Insight uh, that'll be the database that SPCC um, looks at and your filters your custom filters the ones that you've imported and the ones that you've made yourself will re uh, remain available to you um, in the um, in the filter uh, drop downs so there you go pretty straightforward uh, if there's a filter you use that uh, you don't see included in, in what I've uh, shared in the link below uh, feel free to uh, leave a comment on this video or find me on Facebook I uh, frequent uh, the Facebook groups uh, Pix Insight for Beginners Learning Astrophotography and Masters of Pix Insight so if you post in any of those and um, uh, call out, you know, just do, do an at to, uh, to, to, to my name in any of those groups. And if you're looking for a particular filter to get added, uh, happy to do it. Clear skies.